गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स आई विल नॉट से अगेन नाउ यू आर ऑल वेलकम आफ्टर द टॉपिक the chairman of this uh, committee of uh, wrc that is on charitable trust and ngo mr nikhan uh, archit vijendra uh, and uh, where is ritesh vijendra ha ah, it is and ruta madam and my co speaker mr ravi gupta sir kishor shah i see many seniors are attending uh, this program and uh, i marked uh, they are also very eagerly and uh, concentratedly listening to the provisions because the charity and charitable trust are what rightly said earlier somebody that is in in our blood indians indian philosophy and our nature we have learned that since childhood daan dene daan karna even marriage of a daughter is also called kanya daan right see this is in our blood in our nature since uh, age that is why government has thought but to give and not to tax these activities but the basic duty to provide say education medical social services is a government but for various reasons government is unable to provide all these details all these services that is why the charitable trust and ngos come into picture and that is why with the wisdom they thought that we should not tax such entities that is why exemption is given in income tax there are so many concession in given uh, in other areas also uh, and trust uh, 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 but as and when the passing of time they have started putting various conditions for those exemptions and rightly so because the trust provisions are misused too much what you have said my experience but really i tell you people come and the begin that we want to form a trust how for kya benefit mile so their intention is to make money out of the creation of another thing is if you see our national security fcra bfc why fcra is become so stringent because national security is involved if you see our train blast in mumbai other blast other uh, such anti national activities the money is were funded by charity through charity trust so there are reasons with the government to make the provisions more stringent earlier now i'm coming to the topic earlier all cid resolutions were allowed to give the registration within their jurisdiction and they are giving perpetual registration that was earlier college then we have told the bale then told the bale is substituted by actual ab so it was decentralized every 
different CID exemptions were taking their own different interpretation. They were asking different papers. They were also um, not together. And nobody was knowing how many trusts are registered under Income Tax Act in India. So they have brought amendment. Earlier also in FCRA was also perpetual. In 2010 Act, they made it for five years. So here also, registration is also made for five years. And put so many new rules and act and procedure, which has created so many problems. And problems are so many and such. Your attendance here for full day of nearly 200 people, because 20 people, 20, 25 people, is for registration have taken. So it is touching 200. It indicates the problem. See, when institute has arranged lecture on 10 B and 10 BB, you won't believe in the first session, the attendance was only 12,000. Then it went to 15,000. Around then it touched around whole India one line total. So it itself indicates that there are really problems. Not only problems, there are misunderstandings. There are there are no clarity in the law. Even I am sorry to say, in the last 10 years, I have seen eight to ten years. The drafting of law is also very bad. Earlier, there was a drafting department, seniors were there, they were drafting nice, and uh, they, they sh there should not be two interpretation, they take care, it was there. But nowadays, when we see the, the amendment, we found that so many mistakes in drafting itself. And they don't uh, amend that immediately or uh, within a short time. So the same thing is with this registration under income tax. Now, what is the purpose? The primary purpose of Section 12A, AB, 1023 C, is to provide tax benefit to the trust and institution engaged in charitable and religious activities. Even religious is also everywhere taken in the act. You will find charitable and religious, charitable and religious. So charitable and religious are taken at par except in some provisions, in ATG as well as some other provisions, there is little difference. Why registration under IT Act is needed? Why you need that? You can, you can do your uh, activities even without registration. Even Mr. Uh, Ravi Gupta has explained in the morning, there are two, three judgments. Even the corporal donation issued by unregistered trust is also a capital receipt. But with due respect to Ravi, still that, that issue is litigated. It's not that clear. And my practice and my nature is that find out the practical solutions and come out of it. Law is there. You have to follow the law. But there are certain practical hints or practical approach so such thing we should not do. Even in FCRA, prior permission is to be taken. You have to have a separate bank account and all that audit and so many things are there. So wherever you find that it is not law is not clear, you can take chance. Find out the practical solution and go ahead. You have to see that charitable trust is at the end not suffering. And one warning, I'll come to uh, other provisions. We have to be very careful nowadays. If big tax liability arises on the trust, they can sue you for recovery if there is your mistake. And why those mistakes may occur even inadvertently? Because if you fill the form in the wrong false information 
or wrong details if you are giving that trust will face cancellation proceeding. And if it is cancer, consequences we will see are very serious consequences if the trust loses registration. And another is uh, to obtain the benefit of section 1310. There is section 1310 added with effect form that is 1423, uh, wherein for any reason if trust is registered as unregistered, then there were many officers or department were taking different views. Somebody was taxing the cost receipts, somebody was allowing only administrative expenses. In some cases, they have allowed amount spent on object of the trust also. And all those cases were in the litigation. So, to come out of that, they have brought out one very useful and full 30 of damage. Wherein, if the trust is taxed because of non-registration, then in that case, all expenses will be allowed except capital expenditure and donation to other trusts. Depreciation is allowed, TDS, 40A, 1A, 43A, all those will be considered. And then on the net amount, it will be taxed at a normal rate. So that is very important. Even 1310, there are two more areas. If you do not file audit report, then also 1310 benefit will be there. Even if 215, provided 215 is applicable, there are three situations. And there also 1310 benefit will be available. See, along with registration, I will give some other uh, whatever comes to my way and advice and discussions. Highlights of new registration. Now, with the budget 2020, the whole registration process is 360 degree change. So, the process of registration has become completely electronic. Now, everything is done electronically. Then it is centralized with CPC. Means all trusts in India had to get re registration online. And the 10A form was there, the 10 is still there. 10A form will go to CPC and they will award you one number, unique registration number, URI. So there is a centralization of the registration. Then registration will now be governed by section 12AB in place of 12AA because 12AA is replaced by 12AB. And simultaneously in 1023C, which is uh, also, oh, almost uh, brought at par with the 11 and 1023C, except few, I mean, uh, few sections. So, provisor to 1 and 2 also substituted there in 1023C, but the, but the basic form procedure is the same for both the trusts. So, whenever I am saying like 11, 1023C, so everything is covered. We got deadline, timing, all are the same. Then no more registration in perpetuality. Earlier we were given the perpetual registration. Now it is, registration is only for a period of five years. All existing trusts also needed to apply for registration. And this was a big issue. People who were knowing, who attended such seminars, they all did it in time. Uh, we'll see later. So many chances were given. And still, to try right. itself, one circular is in force. I'll explain that in detail. It's a very, very useful. And understand that whoever has missed the buses, they can now uh, do it. <laughs> because there are so many extensions there. Then all existing have needed to register. New concept of provisional registration has been introduced. That is for three years. Old registration were valid up to assessment year 21. From 22, 23, new assessment and new registration will require. Another very important thing is the last point: strict timeline. Whatever timeline is provided. 
it is to be followed strictly within that. There is no provision of condonation. So that is very important point that we'll see when the uh, further details will come. So what provision was there? Twelve double A. Twelve double A was also uh, introduced in 1997, and that was uh, uh, procedural. Twelve A is the basic legislation section, but the procedural aspect was. Uh, they are in section 12 double A. Now they 12 double A uh, with effect from one quarter of the uh, replaced by section 12 AB. Now 12 AB says procedure for fresh registration has been inserted by Finance Act 2020 with effect from one quarter of the one. And there are similar provisions in 1023C and 1011. Now there is one subsection is added with section 12A1, small ac. There are, there, they are short of many sections. If you see 115, it is nearly 45 pages. If you see section 12A, now A, B, 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 C, C, so it is 12A1, ac. It prescribes the timeline for registration of trust and institution and application is to be done in the new prescribed form 10A and 10AB. Now 10A will apply in some cases, 10AB is for, for the uh, renewal and uh, for that uh, 10 AB is there. So re-registration, every trust where Required to get re registration by filing form 10A. The original time was given up to 30th June 2021 because it was applicable from 1 4 21. Three months' time was given in the budget and then it was 30th June. But you know, uh, that time was COVID period, even that COVID period was also going on. And in spite of that, also three months were too short. They also realized time and again. And this date was extended time and again. Full chart I have given separately. Recently, CBDT has issued circular 7, 2024. And again, they have opened the window for all kind of registration which are required. Provision to regular or normal registration from 10A, 10A B can be filed. And and that is uh, up to 30th June 2024. So that is why I thought this circular 7, I will explain in some detail. So there are some legal, normal, small problems are there that you have to take care. Then there is a renewal. When it is for five years, you have to get it renewed. So renewal is to be done or application for renewal is to be done at least six months prior to the expiry of the period. If you delay, your renewal is gone. Because that is what is happened in provisional to regular registration. Because many, many people, 2,400 something cases are there in the Mumbai uh, CIT exemption. There's provisional registration problems. It was so big. Next, so that uh, uh, you have to re-register whether 1023C or whether 11 you are claiming, you have to re-register your, uh, it was very simple, Form 10A was to be uploaded, full details were required and very few documents were to be attached like trustee, registration certificate and last year's account and uh, uh, ITR copy, pen, very Few four or five documents were required to be filed, and uh, you are directly it goes to and without any hearing, without anything, because there is no provision for the CPC to ask for any documents, no verification. Straight they granted for next five years. So, with this provision, most of the trust are having registration from assessment year 22 23 to 25 26. No, sorry, 26 27. 25, 26 uh, financial year, I have kept in my mind because that September is to be kept in our mind for all of us, we have to reapply. And there I want to tell one thing. 
the words used is at least six months prior. Means you can apply earlier to that as well. So I will advise you from April onwards because financial year in the system, they will, you will not get that assessment year. So from April, you start submitting so that they are also staggering and we are also free because there will be scrutiny why this limitation has been kept in FCRA and even in income tax registration. They want to check your activities with the gap of five years. So now you cannot say, okay, uh, we have got registration, we can do anything. Well, every five years you have to go to them and they will verify, otherwise they will reject it. And the consequences of rejection or cancellation is very, very harsh. The provisional registration, there are six clauses in 10 AC. Clause one is for re-registration, two is for renewal, three is for provisional, two regular, four is for uh, changes in the objects of the trust, five is for uh, something, nine, six is for provisional registration, new trust. So earlier there was only a subclass six. Now it is 6A and 6B. That is the effect of 110.23. So 6A is where the activity is not started and 6B is where the activity is started. The wordings and conditions are such that many are facing problem in, in those subsections. We will come to need. Now provisional to regular. The time limit is given six months prior to expiry of the registration date or within six months from the commencement of activities, whichever is earlier. Now, this whichever is earlier has made havoc, and I frankly say most of the cases are mistake from chartered activities. Because that second part is not carefully taken care and people have filed, uh, they were waiting for that uh, three years, uh, two and a half years to over or they realized they are after but by that time that time was passed and commissioner, in spite of he was thinking it's going wrong but he was not able to grant you that uh, renewal provisional to regular conversion. And all those such cases we have rejected. Now, those rejection means even the provisional registration is also gone. Now, provisional registration is granted from X to Y date. You go in between for a regular registration. In between, you have claimed 11 or ATG. If it is there, you have issued 10BE or 10BD form uploaded and uh, those ATG uh, donations accepted. And if it is rejected, then the rejection is from day one. So that is a very bad situation. So the things which are past, you have to face consequences. Now in that case, and those cases were and so many networks. Wrong, they applied in the wrong clause. Somewhere they, 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 they could not even, compliance were not done. Some cases, uh, department found violations by the trustees. And most of the cases were because of belated. And most of the cases, I think we all must have suggested or we must have acted upon that, went to IT against those rejections. And whoever has done that, it was the right thing is done because ITAT in most of the cases taken a view in favor of charitable trust and they have sent back that uh, case again to CIT for reconsideration. Even two Bombay High Court cases where also they have said so what is wrong in that is there is a wrong 
clause has been filled up. Bombay High Court has sent it back to CIT exemption to reconsider those two cases. You know, they realize from all over India's figures because those commissioners we represented and they, they, they jointly represented to the government. We also write through our associations, even uh, institute has also represented with CBDT. That is why this new circular has come. One more chance is given to such trust so that they can regularize their um, registration process. Now, there is one more uh, new concept is added that is inoperative section. The form will be applicable 10 AB because I have given the which form is what. This uh, uh, presentation will be available to you. So, uh, taking picture is temporary and it's fine. <laughs> Even I do. So, now the provision is that. You cannot have 1023C as well as 11A. You can have either or. So, while filing 10A or re-registration, it was a trust to decide if they were having both, because earlier both were allowed. And people were claiming both. So, there were many problems for That's a different issue. Now, in that case, now you can claim only 1023C. So, in form uh, uh, 10A, you fill up the correct uh, subclause and go for 1023C for five years or 11 for five years. So, when you get 1023C, automatic your 11 is gone because you have not applied under that clause. So, you have only one. But where 11 is there, some has got earlier approval for 1023C perpetual. Now that is no more. But there, automatic, the provision says that 11 will not be operative. So it will become inoperative. Now there is a provision. Once 1023C case, can transfer, means can opt for the 11 exemption only once and vice versa is not permitted. The provision wordings are such only 1023C can be converted or can go or can opt for uh, 11 exemption. And there is a time limit, six months prior to commencement of assessment year. So, if you want for 24, 25 financial year, so before 30th September, you opt for that and we want to go for 11. We are surrendering our 1023C and now we want 11. And that application is to be done and the whole process of uh, will be done and it will be granted 11. Then modification of object. Now, there is a provision if you modify any of your object or object clauses of your constitution, whether society, section 8 company or direct charity trust. So that modification, whenever it is to be is done, then the trust required to get and gain re-registration and that application is to be done within 30 days from the adoption of such modifications. So, 30 days time is very short because even I have seen, I practice in Maharaj Goli class as well, everything works. So, there if you apply for uh, 50, 50 a scheme, if you go and change your object, they take 4 months, 6 months, in some cases 1 year. And here they want in 30 days, you have to re-register. And that also they will see whether those changes or as per the conditions granted when the registration was granted, similar to that, they allow you. And here I will advise one practical solution to this is 
because the wording says within 30 days from the adoption of such notification. So adoption can be postponed. Or adoption can be say after the order from the Genetic Commission office or ROC you have received. ROC is passed. You can do it within one month or lesser than that. So you have to apply within 30 days from the adoption of change. If they talk only for objects, not rules and regulations, if the clauses are in administrative nature, because in society there is a separate rules and regulation, in Section 8 company there is a separate uh, uh, article, I'm completely meaning, but here also the same. But in normal trust, if it is a administrative clauses, then you need not go because this provision will not apply. Now, in any other case, so these are the five types of cases, and separately is given any other. Now, any other means who are not falling falling under these five categories. So any other becomes the new new trust. There was a lot of litigation about the activities and CITs were asking activities because unless activity is done, how we can uh, verify the genuineness of the activities? One way they were also right. And nowhere in the act it was mentioned that activity needs to be done before registration. So that litigation, uh, for many years it was going on. So they have brought simultaneously this solution as well. That in subsection A, 6A, capital A, not coming. Means if the activities are not coming, you can directly apply for the provisional registration. That provisional registration will be valid for three years, subject to within six months from uh, commencement of the activity, application for regular registration. And that Provisional registration will be granted to you in one month from the end of the month in which you have applied. Now, nowadays, if you apply, you get within 10 days. 8 to 10 days, they are sending provisional registration. But the problem is here at commence. If you have an old trust, activities are already going on. Now you want to register. So I'll read the provision and then we'll discuss something. Uh, one more thing with this slide, I will put for the question. Simultaneously, we can discuss the question. But frankly, when the whole portion is over, so we can discuss that portion. Or any clarification anybody wants. And no income or part thereof of the said trust has been excluded from the total income on account of availability of subclause 4, 5, 6, 6A of 1023C or section 11 or 12 for any previous year ending on or before the date of such application at any time after the commencement of such activities. And such trust or institution is registered under toilet. Now, if in past you have claimed section 11, which people must have done who have registered uh, uh, toilet at any time, you cannot go for this section. Now, those trusts who miss the buses, I am saying buses. Because it is four or five times the extension was granted. So they were not able to submit the application in none of the sub -clause. So the provisions, that's what I said, the drafting. And you will surprise that the said B clause 100% dicto pasted in ATG. ATG has no concern with claiming 11 in past and all. You can have condition for ATG. Anyhow, we will see that uh, later. So, this condition has become 
the effect of this condition is become such anybody who could not file for registration, they cannot get the registration at all. From current year as well. Now that Mr. Lachlan, now even the same position is in ATG. But and there were many problems. In fact, when we uh, uh, Ruta will agree with me. When we formulated this, so we have, I said, let us give one topic for registration because it has so many issues, so many problems, and so many uh, timelines, and those things are there. So she said, why not you? You only take it. You give any topic. I will be more interested in toilet because I know inside also uh, CIPs. So that is why this circular seven. After this formulation of this program, the circular seven came, which has solved many problems. But still there are some issues that we'll see. Now what is your question? Yes, there is a situation where um, the prior to the uh, 20K when it was there, where 2023C and 11 then similarly recently in the So at the time of registration, when the option came in, the trust has gone in for the registration of uh, under 12 days. Uh, that is under section 11, they have taken the option. Now, actually, the activities are fully covered under 1023C3B, which is it's an education. 3B? It's an educational account. Less than 5 crore. No, sir. It is B, B is, I think, sorry. 3B, <laughs> sorry. I think government, they fully funded government. Okay, more than 50 members. Yeah. So, in that kind of scenario, even though the trust went in for the registration of under section 11 and still claiming the exemption, will it have to go for a registration, go for the 1023C? See, I tell you one. Yeah. I said there is only one way route is given. So, original application, there was a mistake. It was a mistake. Yes. So, now you, and one more thing I tell you. I have seen my, my experience. The condition are almost the same. Yeah. So even if you are claiming 11, there is no much problem. Rather here, accumulations are also permitted. 9A and 10 form is to be filled up, accumulation for 5 years and for the next year. So 11 has got some more better than my 11. Now you want again 1023C. Is it? Basically, the fully funded government aided uh, thing, it's already the entire thing is exact. But for your information, yeah. sub clause 3 yeah. doesn't require everyone. It doesn't require. 11. So you can you can surrender it. You can surrender it. Yes, now this circular also says that okay, you see you can surrender. Clause 3, 2, I think, says you can uh, surrender. You see, subsection 3, only 4, 5, 6, and 6, 8. Are required this registration. Approval, that is. Yeah. Earlier also it was approval. The CIT was running up. So Earlier it was centralized and CIT. Nah, yeah. In this case, you can surrender the. Uh, yeah. yeah. You are even not claim. But because in the provision it is written 4, 5, 6, and 6A. So 3 is not. 3 is anyway. Not. Anyway. Thank you. Any. Now, on this, uh, any question? Or fully confused? No, but it has to be either one. Now, ATG. Though my topic has was uh, registration under income tax act and all that, but I thought ATG is also to be covered for the benefit of participants. I am covering that because uh, similar problems are there. In and ATG is also the same. There are only four clauses instead of six because there is no modification of objects and those clauses are not applicable. So reapproval that is from 10A uh, from old uh, ATG to five years ATG and then uh, uh, renewal same uh, 10AB form uh, for five years and you can get it uh, uh, renewed uh, four and a half years earlier to four and a half years. And say again and again. Because 
very tight timelines. Then provisional to regular, same provisions. Here, non commenced and commenced. ATG also activity non commenced. If you are directly, uh, you want ATG provisional, you can get it. If activities are on, you can uh, go for ATG. If you have claimed 11 or 1023C, 4566A, then you cannot apply in 4B. The same situation with 12A, ATG is also heavy because the same portion is pasted there. So those conditions are there also applicable. And here I'll give you one practical advice for new trust, please apply to a and ATG simultaneously. Because there, no question of claiming 11 earlier year, yeah. being a new trust. So it is advisable to go both, and it is good for us also. To the trust also, they get uh, immediately ATG provisional to provisional, but uh, they get ATG benefits. So this is uh, uh, care is to be taken. Now this is a chart I have given for your ready reference. So many chances were given. The first it was extended up to August 21, then March 22, then 25-11. Circular 22, which was blanketly open for 10A up to 25, 11, 22. It was only for 25 days, but window was open. Then Circular 6 came, that is in May 23. There also they gave long time, up to 30th September, for those trusts who missed the re-registration. Now, Circular 7 has come, that is on 25th of April 2024. I think you all must be aware of it. So here the date is extended for all types of problems, except two or three, which I will, I will, I will, I will read that circular and cover that in circular, uh, so that uh, uh, not only you, I will request all of you in your circle, in your friends, any trust, anybody who you who feel okay, they are uh, in trust, they should know about this circular because I, I think this will be their last chance. And if you do not register, you will you cannot get the, re, the, the um, again registration. And 150 TD is also amended. In such situation, 115 TD will apply. I will see 115 TD later on. Use tax liability. So there are uh, up to 30th September already the extensions were given. So whoever had taken the benefit. But in spite of that, I get every day after this April because Either their registration was rejected for various reasons or they were not having re-registration. In those cases, for assessment year 22-23, cases were selected for scrutiny and additions were made. And rightly so, because you don't have uh, registration, you will not get 11, 15% accumulation for donations. Or was in again litigation. So those trusts were in problem. And few of them I have seen have got removable property. So 115 TD says market value of those immovable property on the specified date minus liability will be taxed at MMR. So it was really a few of the trusts. We are facing tax liability in crores. 
They were at the verge of selling their assets. That situation, CBD realized, and the circular seven has come. So there is a great relief to those cases. And you'll see this the circular seven, how it is useful to everybody, whoever missed. And we see how, why. In 20 budget, Finance Act 2020, these amendments were brought. Extension circulars were time and again issued. There were coverage in newspapers. Everywhere lectures were going on. But in spite of that, our fellow brothers did not bother to re-register. When notices came, then they realized. It was too late. Anyway, why registration is so important? For, for philanthropy, I'm by nature philanthropic. So I get extremely. And I really feel bad certain things which are injustice. Or their injustice is going on. What is wrong they have done? You want to it's uh, them in close. Just they miss. And why they miss? Because you brought them in law. Anyway. Now, this 30th June is the last day for taking the benefits for re-registration. 10A and 10A B both the form. Now 10A in case of application 1023C or 12A 80G, whoever have missed even 35 one also, they can now apply in form 10A and get the registration from assessment year 22-23. In cases where the assessment year 22 pending before CIT appeal, because those assessments are done, all must have filed the appeals because of demand, so many things, because of expecting such a circular or amendment. Or ITAT, then in that case, what is to be done? This is an issue I have raised here, because uh, in some cases, now you get registration. Can you get 154 ratification? Can we apply 154? Anybody? Why? Yes. Okay. Yes. At the time of passing assessment, it was not there. You have done the right thing. And it's not mistake, everyone found it. So 154 also cannot be done. We can apply for giving effect to CID order. Desire authority. Commissioner has uh, granted to you. Give its effect. But that also IDO cannot give. In that case, I will advise submit your explanation whenever the appeal date comes. Or now, because of this circular, I think they have opened the window. Most of the cases, the two line notice they are sending. The window is open for uh, submitting uh, correspondence. So, there you can submit. And now, CIT appeal only can give you relief. Check form 10AB provisional to regular. In case an application, section 1023C3, 12A3, means sub clause 3 of 10 is oh, yeah. uh, proviso. And here is sub clause 3 of uh, 10, uh, 12A1 AC, small AC. ATG file, third clause. Can file fresh application for getting ATG for five years from assessment year 22 23. Subject to you have earlier ATG. If you are not having an earlier ATG, then you will you will not get ATG at all. Because of that 11 claim in past. 
Now, third point is, it may be also noted that the extension of due date shall apply in case where all pending applications. If there is a pending application before the CIT, before the circular uh, came. So, in those cases, if it is under the correct subclause, then you need not file the fresh application. That pending application will be treated as a valid application and they will pass the order after granting you whether uh, it is 11 or 10 but this is C or ATG. Now here also there is one issue. If somebody has done application because in March 23 when they realize they are not having registration, they don't have that or their provisional to regular is rejected. So they, I advise whoever can to okay, you apply. Nothing wrong in applying. Because we were expecting such clarification or relief from CBGT or in the budget which is expected in July. So they come out with the circular. The circular, I will just brief you about the circular because there are two three. Here is one issue that if 6B application is pending, if subclass 3 is pending, means time limit. If it is pending only because of you have not filed in time or rejected related application. In those cases, you can apply. Or even if you have reapplied in subclass 3, then also it will be treated as a valid application. But 6B is not known. Now, whoever has applied for getting that registration because of activities are commenced, taking that interpretation and file the application under 6B. Circular does not cover this situation. Because there is one more situation which circular is covered. Let's suppose you are not having 12A or ATG, but in between you applied for provisional and you were granted for three years. So those registration were valid or are still valid. But the difference was it was from 2324 or SS20 or 2425. Most of the cases 2425. So for two years, you will be assessed at the unregistered. So you tax liability and applicability of 115 TD. Whether so you got the registration there after provisionally on that day uh, when the order was passed or when the date 2223, you were not having a registration. In those cases, circular says you withdraw that provisional registration. There is a clause in the, or there is a system, it permits you to withdraw. You withdraw those pending uh, provisional registration and apply fresh in any form and get the registration or ATG from assessment year 2243. So check your Trust client files, whether such position is there, you can take the benefit of this. But the circular doesn't cover 6B situation. So I discussed PIT exemption is on leave, that's why he could not come. He was eager to be here for inauguration session. Even charity commissioner also. Uh, wanted to come, agreed, but he said on Saturday he has got obsession program decided only one month before, so they could not come. Anyway, this situation I discussed with them headquarters. What is to be done now in this case? Then the department view is that unless that application is rejected, you cannot apply for the pressures. So they have started finding out their records 
that how many have failed this and how many they can see so much of. This is appreciated. That how many are there so we can tell them apply for rejection. So, if you come to know your application is pending under 6b, means you have applied under 6b, who have, have taken that interpretation that activity has been commenced, that's why you are entitled to submit that. It is possible and must have done. So there you write immediately that you reject our that application. We want to go for a normal registration as per circular 7. They are official circular CVDT. So they will immediately reject and then you can go for normal registration. 10A you can file and get it done. So this also you check whether such application is pending. Uh, circular, I think I have covered. Yeah. Anything on this circular? Form name trust. Yes. Yes, please. Not a new. You are asking for new registration? Okay. Earlier you were having calling. Not at all. Means you have not claimed 11 in the past. You, you have a clause directly 6b. Activities are going on. It is commenced. It is not mentioned then when it is commenced. During the year commenced, it is not so. Anytime it is commenced. So in that case, you can apply here in the 6b and get the registration. Directly you will get for five years. But that process will be done. Verification of documents and genuineness and uh, 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 this uh, compliances of any other law, whatever those procedure is there, you have to follow the procedure and then you will get fighting. And if it's completely new trust, where the activities is not started, then suppose A is there, come, uh, not commence activity, you will get provisional registration immediately. Yes, yeah, one by one. Yes, please. Within six months, we need to apply for again. Within six months of commencement of activity. Or, uh, or six months prior to uh, the three years period. Correct. So, we apply for uh, for expiry of the. So, how you can? Three years are over. Sorry? This is 24. No, but after the activity. Commence the activity. No, if you run the activity, the provision, the department asks some of the voting uh, rates. Yes. But uh, that particular notice on this, and uh, you are not complaining of that notice. It is, it is rejected. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, uh, what yes, is there is a difficulty. This is a point I missed in circular 7. I have noted, but hurriedly. See, that situation is also not covered. If it is rejected because of non-compliance, you have only one area, IT80. Time is gone. 60 days. Because here they say solely on account of the fact that application as furnished after the due date or means belated or that the application has been furnished under the wrong section code. Only two conditions are covered. Rejected for non-compliance is not covered. Now, in that situation, this point also I have discussed with department because they also want to know. It is vice versa. So, I know this. 
that they have not taken call on this situation. The decision will be taken by CIT. Maybe a concern principle, CIT or CBDT. Okay, why only non-compliance cases are left out? When you are giving blanket permission, even granting 22, 23 for those who have obtained provisional also and everything you are covering, only this situation you are not covering. So wait for some more time and be vigilant or you can all be so that you can take benefit of that. Mostly I feel, it is my gut feeling, they will permit this situation or they might indirectly say to the CIT, go ahead. Sir? Yes, please. Uh, please. Sir, in continuation of the previous uh, query, somebody had raised, where 11 was never claimed, the exemptions were never claimed, and the trust was formed. They wanted to go for the registration, which they have applied for before the Circular 7 uh, came in. It's a new registration that has happened. So it is for the uh, progressive year. We are not asking for the uh, registration of the I am not able to give it to that. In short, it's a normal process. You are in the right way. Within six months, you will get it. But attend to notices. Yes. 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 Sir, provisional registration is granted and uh, activities have also commenced. So, six months are getting over in uh, May. Month. Getting, in May. getting over or already? No, in May, May 24. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, we, if we apply from which assessment year, uh, it will be granted? The provisional to final registration. Final registration from day one. Uh, it, it, it was granted to you provisionally. Now, it has granted to you finally. Yeah, but when we are filing form 10 in the, uh, it is asking us to select for assessment year 25 20. Uh, what? For 10 BD is fine. For which no, no, no. 10 AD. When we fight for 10 AD, okay. the assessment which is to be selected is first one. First one. No, it is not giving that, that option. 24, 25 is not giving that option. Even otherwise, also, mm -hmm. if you are granted for 24, 25, mm -hmm. you are both.
important is you have complied with any other law. Hello. Hello. Since I have any other law, it is material for the achieving of law. The law which is not material, you will not follow. Now, 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 what is material and what is not material is also in, for example, what we start at nursing home. We have not taken for instance of medical
back and say, my name is Larry Nugent. I have a Mac account using the iOS Windows package. Okay, but plus you got to have it in a mobile property. And you have to have it on a live streaming video on a live streaming platform. Not just on your phone or whatever you like, Windows or Linux, whatever platform you got it. Call the tech day like that, and they will run for you. Otherwise, they will call you eight months on platform day. You calculate when the market value on the iPhone 14 mini says two three dollars, then you call Apple and say, "Hey, this is my iPhone 14 mini." So it is so bad. Okay, but for us, we are data driven business, and we are trying to see it very seriously. That the trust which you are handling is not going to your frequency of use. So take care of that and do your duty diligently because it is, there is one more clause if you give some false information or wrong form and fee. Because if the trust is facing that problem, they can file the suit for the recovery. Moreover, we have decided 